Statins are the most profitable drugs of all time. They lower cholesterol levels by blocking the body's ability to make it. Studies show in people with heart disease, taking statins can cut the risk of heart attack or stroke by about 30 to 50 percent. But preventing heart attacks in healthy people is a different story. Studies show giving statins to healthy people protects a small percentage, but doesn't lengthen lifespan at all. So when new guidelines came out in 2013 that could mean more healthy people taking statins, many experts cried foul. If you haven't had a problem yet, the benefit from those medicines is much lower and is probably not worth it in a lot of the people who are on them now. An estimated 15 to 30 million people take statins. A group of experts chosen by the American Heart Association and American College of Cardiology spent five years rewriting the guidelines on who should take statins. Before, anyone with an LDL cholesterol number of 100 or higher with other risk factors usually got a prescription. But the new guidelines throw out LDL targets, admitting there wasn't enough science behind them in the first place. Now you count risk factors, like diabetes, smoking, or high blood pressure. And they've added studies on stroke and African Americans, although they say studies are lacking on Asians and Hispanics. There's a new risk calculator on the Heart Association website you can use. If the person is white or an African American, you can at least get a ballpark figure as to whether uh, there might be a need for further testing uh, or there might be therapies that could help. Dr. Sidney Smith, who chaired the executive committee, is a heavy in heart care, an award-winning cardiologist, past president of the American Heart Association, and one of its physicians of the year. Yale Medical School voted one of the best doctors in America for 15 years in a row. He says statins are generally safe and effective but the new guidelines significantly lower the point at which healthy people ought to consider statins, from 20% risk of getting heart disease over 10 years down to only 7.5%. Is it too low, do you think? I think that uh, it's, a, it's a tough area to know for sure. I think we're in the ballpark. The Europeans, the, the English have just lowered their, they've had the same observation. Smith says it was lowered to include people who may be developing heart disease and don't know it yet. I see patients at 3 o'clock in the morning who say, couldn't something have been done after their husband dies from a heart attack, the wife has a stroke, and I have to say yes, but only if we could have gotten them to stop smoking, eat the right food, and maybe they would have been a cholesterol, a, tran a candidate to lower cholesterol. But the concern over taking statins to prevent disease is they have side effects. Muscle cramps and memory problems and also an elevation in blood glucose, blood sugar. Other side effects include liver damage and type 2 diabetes, especially in women. Statins may also increase cancer risk in people 75 or older. The guidelines prompted a public outcry. Two top physicians wrote in the New York Times, we believe that the new guidelines are not adequately supported by objective data and that statins should not be recommended for this vastly expanded class of healthy Americans. They also believe statins give a false sense of security. People can just take a pill instead of quitting smoking or losing weight. But the biggest criticism is seven of 16 committee members have financial ties to companies that make statins. It's going to be very difficult for them to have an independent view of the use of the medications. This controversy isn't new. In 2001 and again in 2004, they first started recommending statins for healthy people to prevent heart disease. Not surprisingly, statin sales skyrocketed. It's now known many people making those recommendations had ties to statin makers. Dr. Smith was not on that previous committee, and he's clean. The only work he ever did for statin makers was to tell one company its plan to sell them over the counter was a lousy idea. He does acknowledge the financial ties of others, much of that receiving research money for statin studies. But he says that's why the members were chosen. They are experts on statins. And if they had conflicts, he says, they weren't allowed to vote. Those people had to abstain from voting if there was any relationship. For five years, thousands of articles were reviewed and they had to meet 
inclusion criteria to, to meet the standard. So I think we can trust these guidelines as being based strongly on evidence. Uh, and although there were people on the committee that had done research and did have relationships with industry, I don't think that interfered uh, or altered the final opinion. Smith says the cholesterol guidelines got all the attention, but there were four other committees looking at obesity, high blood pressure, assessing risk, and lifestyle. One thing Smith and the critics agree on is this. The first defense against heart disease is leading a healthy life. This particular epidemic that we're seeing now of heart disease and stroke is an epidemic that need not happen. It's related to our lifestyle. The increase in diabetes and, and uh, obesity we're seeing now. Smoking cigarettes, you, uh, we shouldn't do it. Get rid of it. Regular exercise, we've become a very sedentary society. And he agrees cholesterol numbers aren't as critical as they used to be. About half of first-time heart attack victims have fairly normal cholesterol levels. In fact, there's a growing change of heart on what causes heart disease, from cholesterol to inflammation. Statins work by lowering cholesterol, but they also lower inflammation in the body. So the more you can reduce the inflammation going on, the less need there will be for medication to reduce the inflammation. So what about cholesterol numbers? A North Carolina company, LipoScience, now tests for an LDL particle number. Basically, LDL is bad when its particles are so small they can get stuck in the artery wall. Many are starting to believe the LDL particle number is the only one you need to know. But every expert I talked with agreed diet and lifestyle are paramount. One recommends eating lots of protein and saturated fat. Others say unsaturated fat is better. But they all agree on this. Eat fresh food as much as you can. Cut back on sugar and starch. Stop smoking and get moving. Get out and exercise and move around. As for statins, the debate is only beginning. It's time for you and your doctor to have a heart to heart. In the final analysis, only you can make the needed changes to do your heart good.